As the last light of the sun vanished below the western horizon, the burning hues of sunset slipped away with it. Like a campfire extinguished by sudden rainfall, orange slowly faded into dull blackness, and the blanket of night crept across Hyrule. In the southeast, a light pierced through the darkness, an eerie green-blue glow shrouding a lone mountain like flame. The mountain shone with the sad light of spirits, the same light which cloaked those deceased who are still tethered to the world of the living. Across the kingdom, whispers and hushed stories spoke of this mountain, a cursed place, or a place to which animals migrate. But the stories all agree on one detail. The mountain has a ruler, a spirit known as the Lord of the Mountain. At a certain time on a night with a crescent moon, Satori Mountain glows. A group of bloopies dance in the ordinarily empty pool beneath the cherry blossom, and standing above them, the Lord of the Mountain, Satori itself. This supernatural being has the body and legs of a horse, though it glows brightly a strange blue-green and is marked with swirling patterns. But stranger still is the creature's head, or heads. Instead of the single head of a horse, Satori has two owl-like faces, resting above what looks like a long beard. Atop its head are two golden branched appendages which it shares with the bloopies that surround it, which seem to be miniature versions of Satori itself. The Lord of the Mountain can only be found here when the mountain itself is glowing, and, like the bloopies, will flee if it sees Link. But with a good amount of stamina, Satori can be mounted and ridden like it was an ordinary horse. It's the best mount in the game, boasting the highest possible strength, speed, and stamina stats, and with a sprint gauge that replenishes faster than it can be used. It completely outshines all other mounts in Breath of the Wild, with one little downside, it can't be registered at a stable. If Link tries, the stable worker will recoil in shock, recognising your mount as the fabled Lord of the Mountain. He claims that bringing it to the stable will curse them, and refuses to let Link register the mount. This means, while it's the best horse in the game by a long way, it isn't practical to use, as it can only be found on Satori Mountain at very specific times. The Lord of the Mountain's Hyrule Compendium entry explains that it is a noble creature who watches over all the animals that make their homes in the forest. Apparently, it is a holy creature that is the reincarnation of a sage that died on the lands it now protects. It's an incredibly beautiful, mysterious part of Breath of the Wild's world, and aside from these tiny details, we never learn the truth about what it is. Who was this sage that died on Satori Mountain? Why is this creature so deeply connected to bloopies and to animals? And why are people afraid of it? Let's take a closer look at the history and identity of the Lord of the Mountain. Satori Mountain itself is one of the strangest places in Hyrule. It's a small peak just northeast of the Gerudo Highlands. The mountain is home to the Mog Latan Shrine and a handful of Koroks, but also a huge amount of rare flora, and on nights when the Lord is present, also a menagerie of wildlife. Everything from goats, boars, foxes, squirrels, deer, wolves, buffalo, to countless insects make this mountain their home, a higher concentration of different wildlife than anywhere else in Hyrule. Satori Mountain is also swarmed with hundreds of birds, including crows, which can only be found elsewhere in Korok Forest or the Bottomless Swamp. According to Botric, the Lord calls to the souls of Hyrule's animals, causing them to gather. But while the mountain teems with life, it is steeped in equal measure in death. A horde of undead Stal creatures live on Satori, not just spawn points for the skeletal monsters to tear free from the ground at night, but bones lying on the surface, waiting to walk once more. Again, like the animals, there are a higher concentration of Stal enemies here than almost anywhere else in Hyrule. Interestingly, these Stal enemies don't appear on nights when the Lord of the Mountain is present. It brings life to the mountain and keeps death at bay. This connection to the undead is of course reflected in Satori itself. 
The mountain announces his presence with the eerie glow of spirits, a haunting blue-green used to represent the souls of the dead not only in Breath of the Wild, but multiple times throughout the series as a whole. Its description suggests that Satori is a spirit, the reincarnation of a sage who died on the mountain. Sages are holy individuals appointed by Zelda's various deities to fulfil sacred duties. The most famous are of course Ocarina of Time's seven sages, one from each of Hyrule's major races, each representing a different element. But we've also seen the sages of Earth and Wind in The Wind Waker, whose prayers sustain the Master Sword's power to repel evil, the ethereal sages in Twilight Princess who seal Ganondorf in the Twilight Realm, and various groups of other sages in other games. There doesn't seem to just be one group of sages. We've seen multiple groups fulfilling multiple different purposes across different areas and different times. This means that, while we know that the Lord of the Mountain is rumoured to have once been a sage, this doesn't tell us anything about who they were in life, when they lived, and what their duty as a sage was. But it's possible that we know where Satori lived. A short distance from Satori Mountain lies the Sage Temple Ruins, the decrepit remains of buildings half swallowed up by the Regencia River. The actual stonework of these ruins doesn't tell us much, they're just standard Hylian ruins found across all of Breath of the Wild, but the fact that a place known as the Sage Temple Ruins can be found almost directly at the foot of the mountain on which a sage died can't be ignored. Perhaps this was where Satori lived and carried out his duties, before meeting his end on the nearby mountain. We don't know exactly how old Satori is, and for how long the spirit has appeared on the mountain. Banji, a young woman at the Tabantha Bridge Stable, claims that her aunt used to tell her stories about Satori Mountain, about a lord with dominion over all living things. Apparently, this was an old legend told to children at bedtime, so presumably the Lord of the Mountain has existed for centuries, since at least before the Calamity. In fact, there's evidence that the Lord of the Mountain is even older than we think, older than much of Hyrule, and perhaps older than the ancient Sheikah themselves, who vanished over 10,000 years ago. There doesn't appear to be much of a connection between the Sheikah and Satori at all, except for the presence of a shrine on the mountain. The Lord of the Mountain itself is actually one of very few secrets in the game that don't lead to a shrine or to a Korok seed, but it's likely that the Sheikah were aware of Satori even 10,000 years ago. In the Astral Observatory room deep below Hyrule Castle, the chamber in which Calamity Ganon is fought, we can see decorations covering the wall depicting Hyrule. We can see Death Mountain, the Divine Beasts, the Great Deku Tree, and the Lord of the Mountain. It's a tiny detail, but on the mountain meant to resemble Satori Mountain, we can see a shape clearly meant to depict the spirit. This tells us two things. First, that the Lord of the Mountain is at least 10,000 years old, and second, the Sheikah considered it significant enough to depict on their walls. The Lord of the Mountain doesn't appear to be Sheikah in origin, nor is it overly connected with the tribe. It's one of the surprisingly few parts of this Hyrule that is outside of their control, yet they appear to have been aware of it. So it's the incredibly ancient reincarnation of a sage who died on the mountain, who now acts almost as a god of nature and of wildlife. Its connection to the animals of Hyrule is clear, but it's also incredibly closely linked to Blue Peas. There's a Korok named Peaks who mentions that he wants a picture of a Blue Pea. There are of course the little rabbit-like creatures that surround the Lord of the Mountain, and can be found rarely in Hyrule elsewhere. They dance around and flee at the sight of Link, but if shot, will drop rupees before vanishing. After Link takes a picture of one, Peaks wonders if they sparkle because they're too full of rupees, and asks if they make all the rupees in the world. The Hyrule Compendium entry for Blue Peas suggests that they collect rupees instead, which makes sense considering that rupees have been shown to have magical properties multiple times across the series. In Breath of the Wild, rupees directly power the Great Fairies, who have withered up after visits from travellers became scarcer, and need rupees to regain their strength. Whether Blue Peas create rupees or collect them, it's likely that they're fueled by the same magic as the Great Fairies, a magic closely connected to rupees. This, then, is a further connection between the Lord of the Mountain and Divine Beings. 
It's obviously designed to look like the leader of the blue peas. It's surrounded by them, it glows the same colour, it has the same golden appendages, and its face resembles two blue pea faces. If these smaller creatures related to Satori are connected to the magic of rupees, then the Lord of the Mountain itself should be too. We see what happens to divine beings when they don't have access to rupees, they wither and lose their power. So if bloopies are collecting rupees from across Hyrule, perhaps they collect them to directly power their Lord, without the need for help from humans. Together with the Lord of the Mountain's design similarities to the Light Spirits and its protectiveness over its domain, this could place Satori in a similar league to other guardian deities in Zelda, like Jabu Jabu, the Great Deku Tree, or Valu. Perhaps the death of Satori the Sage wasn't an accident, but part of his sacred duty. He died to become the guardian deity of the wild, of Hyrule and its creatures, now serving as the immortal Lord of the Mountain, a god that protects life. Satori's previous life as a sage helps explain its ability to repel the undead, and prevent the Stal enemies from reanimating on the mountain while it is present. Sages are almost always tasked with keeping evil at bay, whether that's powering the Master Sword or physically sealing the darkness. The Lord's design reflects his origins as a sage too. Obviously it glows the same blue-green colour as blue peas and spirits, but the fact that its faces resemble those of owls could call back to another mysterious being, Kaipora Gabora. Just like Satori, Kaipora Gabora is rumoured to be the reincarnation of an ancient sage. Its design also harkens back to Twilight Princess's Light Spirits, sacred beings created to protect Hyrule. The Light Spirits are obviously spirits which take the form of animals, just like Satori, but they also feature similar swirling patterns on their bodies, which again connects the Lord of the Mountain to the goddesses. But perhaps the most important design inspiration behind the Lord of the Mountain might come, as many things in Breath of the Wild do, from Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. The connections between Breath of the Wild and Ghibli are numerous, and in particular, the game takes heavy inspiration from the 1997 film Princess Mononoke. There are countless design choices from the Zelda team that hail back to Mononoke, from Link's design to malice and the overarching theme of nature versus technology. There are many brilliant videos and threads covering the copious similarities between the media, both those on the surface and deeper thematic connections, but what we're interested in is one of the most enigmatic characters in the film, the Forest Spirit. Mononoke's Forest Spirit is a god who protects the Cedar Forest. The spirit heals Ashitaka's poisoned arm. It has the power to give life and take life away. Both life and death are his and his alone. It represents the two sides of nature, the beauty of new life and the inevitability of death, and its form reflects this. During the day, it appears as a deer with a human face, while at night, it transforms into the gargantuan Nightwalker. A central theme of Princess Mononoke is that of humans encroaching on nature and taking its resources. The film's primary antagonist, Eboshi, plans to destroy the cedar forest in order to profit from mining the mountain, and it's eventually only the sacrifice of the forest spirit that brings balance and peace. The Lord of the Mountain of course has a similar design to the forest spirit, both to its bestial deer form and to the spectral nightwalker, which not only glows a similar colour, but also features swirling patterns on its body. But like with many of the inspirations taken from Ghibli, this isn't just surface level. The Lord of the Mountain fulfills the same role as the Forest Spirit. It is the protector of all animals that make their homes in the forest, and just like the Forest Spirit, it represents both life and death. Satori is a spirit, the reincarnation of a dead sage, and its mountain emphasises the duality of life and death. When it is absent, the mountain crawls with stal creatures, but under Satori's care, it blooms with life. A character named Quint can be found at the Wetland Stable, a man who was apparently a hunter by trade. He explains that, one night, he travelled to Satori Mountain to hunt its animals and sell their meat. Suddenly, he runs into a hungry dog who begs him for food. Quince relents and feeds the dog, but it runs off, and a little later, the hunter takes a nap. 
He explains that he awoke to a big glowing beast standing over him, startling him so much he couldn't draw his bow. The Lord of the Mountain charged at the hunter, but was stopped by the dog, who came between the two, barking at the mountain spirit. Quince took the pup and fled the mountain, never to return. This story is easy to miss, but it provides a little more backstory to Satori. Like its Hyrule Compendium entry states, it is the protector of all animals who live in the forest, and so when a hunter arrived on its mountain to kill its creatures and sell their flesh, it intervened. We don't know what would have happened had the dog not arrived to stop the Lord of the Mountain, but the message is clear. It is the protector of the mountain and its animals, and will defend them from harm. Like nature itself, it is beautiful but dangerous. It cannot be tamed or owned by humans, to the point where stable workers cower in fear of a curse should they try to keep it. The Lord of the Mountain's home is a small pond in the shadow of a cherry blossom, one of only two in the entirety of Hyrule, the other being the Great Deku Tree itself. In Japanese culture, the way that the trees blossom suddenly all at once, and then just as suddenly fall, represents the fleeting nature of life. The Lord of the Mountain's name, Satori, is a Japanese Buddhist term for awakening or enlightenment. While in life, Satori may have been a sage living in the nearby temple, in death he is so much more. He is the embodiment of the wilderness, and its equal dominion over both life and death. It's worth mentioning that while there are numerous cultural and media inspirations for Satori, and it has roots in established Zelda lore, there's an out-of-universe answer for this mysterious part of the game too. Satoru Iwata was of course president of Nintendo up until his death in 2015. Though he sadly passed away before the release of Breath of the Wild, his impact on the game was huge, and was felt even after his passing. The game's director, Hidemaru Fujibayashi, comments on his influence. When he passed away, there were moments when we'd come up with an idea which we'd be excited to talk to Iwata about, then we'd remember he was no longer here. Miyamoto told me it was the same for him. He'd come up with an idea at the weekend and would feel excited to speak to Iwata about it on Monday, only to remember. The sadness runs deep. This is approaching spiritual talk, but we had the sense that he was watching over our work. That became a source of motivation, a drive for us to improve and be better. With Satoru Iwata's huge impact on the game's development in mind, Satori, the Lord of the Mountain, takes on an entirely new meaning. Iwata's influence was felt throughout the development of Breath of the Wild's world, so, in a way, Satoru Iwata himself watched over Hyrule and its creatures. His legacy is immortalized in Satori, the reincarnation of a sage who died on the mountain, who now watches over and cares for the wildlife of Hyrule. Thanks for watching this video. What do you think the Lord of the Mountain is? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, leave a like, or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.